We're all familiar with the word aliens, usually associated with sci-fi films about an invasion from another planet. But it also relates to bringing a species into a country where it's not evolved. From the viewpoint of our native red squirrels, this is how it must seem when the much larger American grey squirrel suddenly appears in their territory. Landowner, Mr Brocklehurst of Hembury Park in Cheshire, brought the first greys into the UK in 1876, presumably as a novelty. Fellow landowners either didn't want to be outdone or took a shine to the bold American greys, and 30 other introductions around the country sealed the fate of our native red squirrels. Up until that point, our native reds had their highs and lows, but always managed to bounce back. Nobody knows for sure, but it's thought that squirrels don't go back as far as the dinosaurs. Fossil evidence suggests a squirrel-like animal existed around 34 million years ago and that it wasn't that different from squirrels seen today. The first sign of red squirrels in the UK was when the land bridge to Europe began to disappear around 10,000 years ago. And presumably squirrels were doing well after the Ice Age. That is, until humans progressed from a nomadic lifestyle to living in settlements. This was when trees were cleared to make way for farming. And wood was needed for buildings, as well as fuel. But our red squirrels still flourished although records from the 15th and 16th centuries show that red squirrel numbers plummeted in Scotland and Wales, largely because timber was used in industry, agriculture and war, resulting in the felling of large areas of woodland. By the 18th century, the red squirrel had virtually become extinct in Scotland. But by replanting the trees, numbers rose. And by the start of the 20th century, the tenacious reds had recovered to such an extent that in some places they became known as a pest. Between 1903 and 1933, the Highland Squirrel Club recorded killing 82,000 red squirrels. <laughs> Nowadays, red squirrels and their drays are protected by law. Today, reds are scarce in the UK. The map shows they are mainly confined to islands, such as the Isle of Wight, Brownsey Island and Anglesey. Also large conifer plantations in the Scottish Highlands. In Ireland and pockets in Wales plus a few areas in England. Namely Formby in Lancashire, Northumberland and Cumbria and also the Channel Island of Jersey. The UK isn't the only country to have red squirrels. Europe and Asia from the Arctic Circle in the north to the Mediterranean Sea in the south, from China in the east to Britain in the west, do have populations of red squirrels. But it's only in this country and Italy that they face an immediate threat. Greys were introduced into northern Italy in the 1940s, where they are also winning the battle for woodland habitat. So how do the greys manage to replace reds so easily? 
To start with, size does matter. The greys are nearly twice the size of reds. So of course where greys move in, the reds become stressed at this oversized competition. Both species are tree squirrels, but are classed as rodents because their teeth grow throughout their life. A commonly asked question is whether the two species can breed together. As they are genetically too different, no, they can't. For the record, the white squirrels and the black ones you hear about are the American greys. A grey's coat has three colours in it, black, white and a reddish brown. In the black or white animals, the other two colours are missing due to their genetic makeup. Food and good dray building sites are limited, and the larger greys outcompete our smaller native red squirrels for essential resources and territory. Grey squirrels live at a higher density, sometimes up to 10 or more per hectare, whereas the reds live at around 1 per hectare. And this means other woodland animals and the trees, which the greys can ring bark, are put under a lot of pressure. Both greys and reds eat a wide range of foods, but the greys can digest chemicals called tannins in acorns which the reds can't do effectively, although they do forage for acorns and eat a few. This gives a huge advantage to the American greys who can get fat on acorns and put on 20% of their body weight for the winter. The most devastating and cruel twist of fate is that around 70% of grey squirrels carry a disease called squirrelpox virus which they do not contract themselves, but they pass it on to any reds they come into contact with. The disease can virtually wipe out a population of reds very quickly, as it has several times on the small reserve at Formby. Situated on sand dunes, just north of Liverpool, on the Lancashire coast, the reserve was isolated for a long time, and the greys didn't find their way to it. In 2005, Red squirrels were plentiful and a delight for visitors to see. Then squirrel pox struck. But red numbers did start to rise once the disease burnt itself out after killing 90% of the population. Then another grey squirrel brought the virus in again in 2008 and 2011 and numbers dropped again. Once greys are taken out and the disease has gone then red squirrel numbers do rise again. This scenario has been playing out in other parts of the UK for many years. People around the country are working hard to keep their reds and prevent the greys spreading even further. There are different ways of battling the grey invaders. First of all, we will look at Scotland. I'm a retired gamekeeper and I trap grey squirrels for Buclui Estates in the Lidl Valley and also the Hermitage Valley. The greys came in in about 1990. They started off in Canaby and started moving up through the valleys and I shot the first one in Buclui Estates about 1990. So the greys started spreading up through the valleys and we had reds and greys in the same woodlands but since they've started trapping greys right down through we're getting less greys and more reds. I sometimes get phone calls from villagers and people in the area with a grey squirrel problem then I'll go and attend to it. Moving down to the north of England, there are a number of groups hard at work on the frontier trying to stem the grey invasion. 
I've actually got a report of two squirrels, two grey squirrels, attacking a pheasant. Now, if they're going to take something that size, you know, they are a big threat to bird populations. Also, it's well known that they do serious damage to trees. And in, in our first newsletter, there's a, a very good article about the damage that um, in one of the national park woodlands at uh, Haverthwaite Heights, um, the grey squirrel coming in and damaging the young trees, about 12 years old, and decimating them. So all, the, all that money that went into planting those trees has just been wasted, purely and simply because of the damage by the grey squirrel. Well, basically, the, the trapping is to uh, remove as many grey squirrels as we possibly can from our target area, and uh, so enable the red squirrels to return. Um, this is working very successfully at the moment, and in, in most areas we're, we're getting rid of the, the grey squirrels, but we're bit, and more and more red squirrels are coming back again now. So uh, what we've got is we've got little tiny peanut feeders uh, that are made actually from jam jar lids plus uh, some wire mesh, uh, and they go inside the traps. And uh, what we do is we put, a, say, a handful of peanuts into the little peanut feeders, uh, and we wire them up right at the back of the, the uh, trap, and uh, but in order to get to that feeder, the squirrel has to go over the treadle at the back of the trap, and that's what sets the trap off. It's then trapped. Grey squirrels were first seen in Grasmere in about 1971. And since then, uh, various people from the group have been working tirelessly to eradicate the greys from a small, well-defended area of Grasmere. We have found that the greys enter the Grasmere area by two corridors from the south and our current practice is to place large numbers of traps in these corridors to try and intercept the greys as they enter the area. To the north of Grasmere is a red squirrel refuge area, one of about seven or eight I understand that have been created in the north of England uh, in order to provide the last stand habitats, if you like, for the red squirrel. So Grasmere is very important in protecting those refuge areas. Grasmere by now is very much a red only area with only the occasional grey. But that still means that we have to spend a considerable time chasing round one or two uh, greys to keep the area free. We have heard a lot about trapping. It must be done under strict guidelines by a trained person and under licence. The grey squirrels must be dispatched humanely and quickly. Traps are then disinfected to avoid spreading squirrel pox. Any red squirrels caught are released. Heading south, the island of Anglesey, off the west coast of Wales, was virtually taken over by greys once the bridges across the Menai Straits were built. However, her supreme effort to remove greys and reintroduce reds has meant that reds now abound in most woods on the island. Okay, by 2012, where we had uh, a landscape historically full of grey squirrels, we now got a landscape full of reds and hardly any grey squirrels in it, but they're still there small numbers. We've got to find them and remove them and that means trawling through all these woodlands over and over and over and over again and that's what we're doing and we need to do that to get long-term sustainability. We can't have even a small number of greys on the island because should they breed they will very rapidly take over the countryside once again we'll be back to square one. In parallel with that we have an issue of the bridges because there's no doubt about it we've got the M6 here it's a squirrel corridor linking Gwyneth with the island and red squirrels have colonised Gwyneth, they've come off um, across the straits using the bridges if they can do that then grey squirrels certainly can come the other way and that means putting in place uh, some heavy culling on the, on the Gwyneth side and that's what we're going to do
Across the Irish Sea, there is a similar struggle and the battle is on to push back the greys. We're going to the beautiful Tollymore Forest on the Moor Mountains to hear how local groups are fighting back. There are two schools of thought about the origin of the Red Squirrel in Ireland. Uh, one believes that they arrived in Ireland after the end of the last Ice Age. Others believe that they were introduced by man, possibly even in prehistoric period. Uh, it's hard to believe that they didn't arrive after the last Ice Age along with the oak woods and pine woods that arrived across the land bridge between England and Ireland. Um, but because there's been no archaeological evidence of that presence in Ireland since that period, uh, others believe that, of course, they were brought over by man. Um, in the 16th century, the fur of the red squirrel was used a lot by poor people for clothing and for trimming cloaks, etc. And they were also hunted and exported England. There's records of them going out of Dublin in their tens of thousands for as much as a penny a pelt. It was believed that after this time, the red squirrel became extinct in Ireland and there were several introductions from mainland Britain, which uh, were probably originally red squirrels that had been brought over from Europe to populate England at that time. But a recent genetic study undertaken by the National University of Galway has shown that the red squirrels in Ireland today contain a mixture of both native Irish red squirrel stock and imported stock. Heading to the south of England, we come to two islands that are protected from grey invasion by the sea. Brownsey Island in Poole Harbour is well known as the birthplace of the scouting movement, but also has a stable population of red squirrels and no greys. Although they are but a short swim away. And yes, reds and greys are excellent swimmers. Tree species on Brownsea include the red squirrel's favourite, Scots pine and Corsican pine. However, there are also deer who nibble the trees in valuable understory if there's no protection. The Isle of Wight is seen as a nationally important stronghold for red squirrels. This is because we have the Solent, a body of water, between us and the mainland, effectively keeping the greys off. It will be possible for a grey to get on board a yacht at Lymington or Bewley, tuck itself away for the night and jump off at one of the island's harbours if the yacht owner fancied a visit to the Isle of Wight. There is enough woodland for around 3,000 red squirrels when their numbers peak, although there are other threats which result in a drop in numbers and they are still under threat of grey invasion in spite of being an island. Calls from anyone suspecting they've seen a grey squirrel are recorded and checked out. Better safe than sorry. There are contingency plans for dealing with any visits by grey squirrels. White Squirrel Project monitors red squirrels by observation, not trapping, and by the same non-invasive methods for greys. Thankfully, reports of greys normally turn out to be a red squirrel with a grey coat. But it's not always easy to tell the difference, especially if the animal is moving fast, is some distance away, or in the trees. If the animal has ear tufts in the winter, then it's a red squirrel, as greys don't have tufts. If possible, look at the tail. A grey's tail has three colours in it, and a distinct halo. It's also difficult to be sure of size and shape unless you get a long close look. There is another UK island which has reds but we don't often hear about. Better known for its scenery and cows. Jersey is the only one of the Channel Islands to have a population of reds and no greys. The population of reds as helped by residents feeding them the gardens, resulting in a rise in numbers due to this supplementary feeding. 
but unfortunately some are killed on the roads. However, rope bridges and road signs make crossing safer. Squirrels were introduced to Jersey in the uh, 1885. Um, they came from both France and southwest England, uh, introducing quite an interesting mix of uh, genetics into the island. Since then, the population seems to have flourished. Having said that, though, there are several threats that the red squirrel population is experiencing. Road traffic accidents account for a 64.5% um, degree of mortality on the island, and predation accounts for 12.3%, and disease accounts for 23.2% of mortality. Um, that's an alarmingly high figure for the disease status, and that's why we're currently running an ongoing disease surveillance project on the island to study the impacts and identify the threats um, regarding disease, infectious disease on the island, to see what we can do about it and hopefully develop future strategy um, plans to address those issues. You may wonder why reds are not routinely bred and released once the greys have been removed, but... Yeah, I've been uh, keeping red squirrels now for sort of 30 years plus, and when I started, uh, they were disappearing rapidly from the south of England, and I thought it's going to be very easy to breed them. I imagined them abounding in the local woods, but first of all, I found it was very difficult to breed them, successfully in captivity uh, but over the years I gradually got better at it and now we've got a, a reasonable captive breeding group but as for releasing them if you've just released them into grey squirrel areas which is the main part of this of the mainland of course they just wouldn't survive but certainly it's not easy to breed squirrels in the first place and having done so we have to think very carefully about we, where we might release them and it, it has to be done through a scheme that's directed by English Nature and uh, other bodies like the Forestry Commission. Right, yes, this is Erica. She's uh, an orphan squirrel that's been brought up by hand but she's, she's quite a good case in point because uh, unfortunately I've had a few brown rat problems in the last couple of seasons and uh, they've actually attacked the squirrels and um, because she's particularly tame she would go up to any you know a cat or dog or in this case a brown rat and uh, she'd bitten on the eye and the eye got infected unfortunately the local wildlife hospital at uh, East Winch uh, removed the eye and um, she survived successfully but a little bit worse for wear well it seems the captive breeding of red squirrels isn't as easy as you might think it takes a lot of effort and fundraising to remove the American greys so that red squirrels and other native animals may increase in our woodland. I hope this film has given you food for thought. Greys are appealing in their own way and it's a shame they are a threat to so many other species, but mostly to our charismatic reds. Perhaps you would like to get involved and help your local red squirrel group, if there is one in your area. And watch out for press stories on this long-running battle where the situation keeps on changing. Our native red squirrel remains a favourite wild animal. They're often described as time wasters because you feel compelled to watch them. They have a fascination and charisma all of their own. People who have red squirrels in their garden regard them as part of the family as well as entertainment. 
The squirrels are attracted to gardens if there is a source of easy food and water available. Usually put out for the birds in the first place. Their antics are entertaining and if they bury a few nuts in your flower pots, well it's worth the inconvenience. To keep red squirrels healthy they need a mixed diet. Too many peanuts can cause osteoporosis, thinning of the bone. So it's vital to feed a variety of nuts and seeds, such as sunflower seeds, hazelnuts, walnut and pine nuts. Never feed Brazil nuts. Too many can kill. They also like fresh fruit, mushroom and sweet corn, which is good for them. But, like us, they all have their preferences and will go for their favourite food first. Squirrel only feeders and drays, made by White Squirrel Project volunteer Mike, are ideal for the squirrels but must be kept clean as disease can pass on where a number of squirrels feed from the same container. Whilst the free food does help squirrel survival, there are hazards in gardens that can and do account for red squirrel deaths every year. Cats and dogs do catch the unwary squirrel, usually when they're crossing open ground or burying nuts. So keep feeders away from open spaces, off the ground and near an escape route. If you want to keep birds, such as jays, out of the feeder, a simple guard does the trick. Although it doesn't stop enterprising small rodents. Cats also pass on toxoplasmosis to squirrels, which can kill them. The disease is passed via the cat's feces and the squirrel picks it up whilst burying or digging up stored food. Although squirrels are good swimmers, they can die of exhaustion if they get into steep-sided ponds or water butts. A simple piece of wire can take care of this problem, where water butts are concerned, and a branch put in ponds or troughs so squirrels and other animals can climb out is a good solution. Rat poison kills squirrels as well as rats. It is illegal to put down rat poison where red squirrels could pick it up. Therefore it must be in a dark tunnel using the correct box and put in a bush or underground and well covered up. Fen traps are sometimes put down to kill rats but end up catching squirrels ripping their limbs off in the process. Squirrel wounds heal fast and those who survive can adapt remarkably well to the loss of limbs. Again it is illegal to use these traps where a red squirrel could get caught in it. If you have room in your garden plant trees such as hazel that will provide food for the squirrels. If you have a suitable tree, then placing an artificial dray on a sheltered branch will provide a home which is more secure from avian predators. Obviously, don't attract red squirrels to feed in your garden if they have to cross a road to get there. The result is always the same. They end up dead on the verge, or flattened in the middle of the road. Sometimes crossing points are possible, but as this technique relies on the squirrel climbing the tree to feed, if they've already fed in your garden, this technique is not so effective. Woodland owners can help their trees produce a good crop of nuts and fruit by making sure the wood is managed sympathetically. 
a long coppice rotation of 12 to 15 years is better for wildlife. If the hazel is left for too long, or is under the shade of taller trees, it will not fruit and may die back. So it is better to coppice. Regrowth happens very fast on the Isle of Wight, as there are no deer to nibble the young shoots. Hazel needs plenty of light in order to provide a good nut crop, so keeping the standard trees to around 24 per hectare is best. Also, use a checkerboard method rather than cutting coops in succession. This allows small mammals, such as dormice, to move on. Other tree species that are particularly good for red squirrels and other wildlife are sweet chestnut, beech, Norway spruce, Scots pine and Corsican pine. Development has had an impact on some woodlands. Squirrels are of secondary importance to housing and roads. Some modern farming methods require the loss of hedgerows. This takes away vital corridor links for wildlife, including squirrels. But, on the Isle of Wight, reinstating hedgerows which link woodland together, plus extending small woods, has in some places reversed this trend. Keeping greys off the island and looking after woodland habitat is the most important tasks humans must be committed to if we are to keep our red squirrels. Most places in the UK are not as lucky as us, so we should appreciate what we have and look after it. <laughs>